pay and there is a scarcity of it. And now we are here. You know, I have to admit that the first time I came, I went into Rayleigh's store. Rayleigh's. And the first time I went there, and my word was, whoa! I could see the fruits in order, and it's a lot. I said, whoa! The first time I drove here, and the five lanes, I said, whoa! And then you drive 120 kilometers per hour, I said, whoa! I went back to the Philippines and the drive and the tricycle is riding nga, 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 and he said, ooh. But I would like to tell you that many times even though we are already here, we are dissatisfied. It's not only, only in the Philippines where people are dissatisfied, even here there are many people and most of us are dissatisfied. Right? I believe this satisfaction, dissatisfaction is something new. Even, even David, even Solomon, they were dissatisfied with one wife. Well, they were told in the scripture that you're not going to multiply wives. And more than that, he said you're not going to multiply wives from other races. Dissatisfaction, a consequence of satisfaction, dissatisfaction, a consequence of sin. Now, if we are going to look at the wrong place, we are dreaming. We'll never be satisfied. Like, for example, if you say, oh, if I'm going to have the best car, I will be satisfied. I will have the turbo. I will have all this. I will be satisfied. I tell you, you will not. The turbo that is installed there, still you will not be satisfied. You are going to put another one. And one of the worst thing and the worst evil thing that we are going to face, we are not done paying. The model is already outmodeled. We are not done paying yet. How painful that is, isn't it? Where can we find true satisfaction and who and what can really satisfy us? You find that in verse 14, underline it because that is a very good verse and it says two things that will satisfy us. And that verse in verse 14 will tell you the truth. Satisfy us in the morning. Now, who is saying Moses? To whom is he saying? To the Lord. Where is he asking? Where is Moses asking? From the Lord. That's why number one, only the Lord can truly satisfy us. If you are going to look for satisfaction in the world, you will not be able to find it. Even if you are going to own the whole world. This is the prayer of Moses to the Lord upon the people of Israel to satisfy them in the morning. If you remember at the time when they were complaining about hunger and uh, they were the wandering and God has provided them with the manna. And when God has provided them, they were still dissatisfied. God provided them the quail, they were still dissatisfied. Now why? It is because they were looking for the wrong time, in the wrong place. Now many times, we look for satisfaction in the afternoon. Right? When they say that on the end of the day, as I'm going to bed on my pillow, and when I'm going to think that I have not done anything wrong, that I will be satisfied. But, you know what? The Bible says that satisfaction is in the morning, it's not on the afternoon. Now why? Why not in the afternoon? Why, why is it in the morning? It's not supposed to be after the end of the day that you will be satisfied with what you have done? Well, it is not in the morning. Because why? It is in the morning. If you will be satisfied in the morning, you will become a blessing for the whole day. Your day will be whole. Your day will be peaceful if you know that you are satisfied in the morning. Try to work hungry. 
Huh? What happened? You're lousy. Well, they said that don't work full because you will be sleepy. But you are going to have the strength. That's why they said that here in America, there is a wrong way of eating. Why? When is the time that you are going to eat so much? At night! What do you need at night? To pull the blanket? No! You need strength to carry things in your work. That's why you eat in the morning. Be satisfied in the morning. That's the reason we have big stomach. Why? Because we eat and then sleep. There is no grinding. There is no using of the calories. Right? That's why it says satisfy us in the morning because it is in the morning. When you are satisfied in the morning, then your days will be glad and your days will be full of blessing. You are going to consider. You know the blessing? It is not how much you receive. It is how you see. At the end of the day, in the afternoon, it's all what you have is tiredness and exhaustion. Being satisfied means we have sufficiency and security in the Lord who never runs out of supply. If the Lord has satisfied us in the morning, our whole day will be filled with joyful singing and gladness. You will sing out of joy even though you are out of tune. Number two, only in His love can we be satisfied. Is this there very clear in the morning? Lord, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. In other versions, it says, out of your mercy. The NIV, it says, unfailing love, the King James Version, it says, your mercy. The abundance of material things do not satisfy. Would you say amen? amen? Only the assurance of the love of the Lord does. That's what we are looking for, isn't it? We look for someone to love us. We look for someone to love. Because by that, you know, there is satisfaction and there is meaning. On Israel's journey, the Lord provided them manna out of their discontent. And they're still dissatisfied. God subjected them into wandering around the desert for 40 years instead of a journey for 40 days. But the Lord assured them of His love. I've been reading. I'm about to end. I'm just about to finish the Second Chronicles. You know, I started from the book of Genesis and now on Second Chronicles. And uh, as I look at the people of Israel, you know, I, I, could, I could see the repetition that even though the leaders, the king of Israel, the king of Judah have sinned, God preserved them. God preserved the line, he said, because of my promise to David. Because of my covenant of love to them, of the people of Israel. I will preserve. How nice it is. That in spite of our sinfulness, God promised that He is going to love us. Could you say amen? I was taking a seminar one time, and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the most assuring things you know, to our children is that we do not demand that our children will be perfect, even though we are going to train them that they are going to commit less mistakes. Because the more mistake they are going to commit, the more trouble they are going to have. And we are going to assure them and say that in spite of you, who you are, what you have done, you are still my son, you are my daughter, and I love you. And if there is one satisfying statement and truth, is that is this, that God loves us in spite of who we are. God sent his son to die on the cross for you. 
Love seems to be very vague and not comprehensible by us. What is really like? What is love? Well, I define it in a very simple way based on this message. Love is like a child assured and secured in the home of his parents. Because a child must learn and must know that there is no place like home. That is the love of the Lord that satisfies. The scriptural description of love is Psalm 23. It is a picture of a good shepherd who loves his sheep, sleeps in the field to tend them, and dies to protect them when a predator takes on them. I like very much the end of that, of that chapter, chapter 23. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. When we wake up in the morning and we sing the joy and gladness of His mercy that He gave us life anew, blessed with many opportunities to be a blessing and bear the honor of His name, that is love. That's why children, it's not a demand and a command that you are going to behave. Why? Because you reflect and bear the name of your parents. And if you and I are a child of God, if we know what love is, He loves us so much that we bear His name. Amen? Amen. Amen. We live in dissatisfaction and a moan if our minds are always on the load of the day and not of the love of the Lord. If we begin the day with the assurance that the Lord's love is with us, we live with satisfaction and we will be a blessing. Could you say amen? The truth is, we can only give what we have. We can bless others if we know we are. A young man went to take his examination. At the exam, he did not follow exactly the advices he received. When, he, when the bell was rung, he was, almost, he was not almost willing to give up his exam paper for the reason that he was not satisfied. We will not live in regret even when the time had passed so quickly because we know that we have been blessed by the Lord and have blessed others. When the time is up and the roll call is cold, we'll be happy for the work well done. Would you say amen? Amen. amen. In conclusion, we're going to ask Ria. Ria, will you please come? We'd like to ask your help. When the time is up, no regret. If, if, or if we, one, acknowledge who the Lord is in our lives. Number two, if we abide with what God has prescribed. Number three, after for the blessings of the Lord upon you. Could you say amen? I'd like to share to you a hymn uh, which most of us probably if you have been long enough in the Christian life and you have been in some called traditional worship services, you have heard this song. I'd like you to stand with me and we are going to sing this song. It expressed the prayers in our hearts in view of the message. Here.